terrorizing them. So a put it in their head, oh, no, that's, that's hot. And so they're not going to touch it no more. And it's sad that you got to teach some of the youth like this, but it's better to teach some of the youth like this than them to be in the box or in the cage for the rest of their life. What was gangbanging like in Colorado growing up, man? All right, so um, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. Like I said, a lot of people in California migrated to Denver, Colorado, you know, um, I was out in Aurora, where my twin brother was on the east side of Denver, so he, he was with the Trey Trey Crips. And growing up, where I was at the Southland was like the Raymond Crips, you had the Cobden Crip Riders, and you had the Hoovers, you know what I'm saying? And there were the West Side Crips, and then they out with the East Side Crips. So I see more Crip on Crip violet than I see Crips on blood violet. You know what I mean? And that's what a lot of people, when I get to the Eastern part of the United States, they understand. So, it's different from the eastern part to the western parts. You know, eastern parts, the holy one of uh, uh, aim under the six point star, and on the west coast there ain't no star. That's ZD folks and vice lord stuff. You know, so a lot of people got stuff confused. But you were at Lee County when the blood got into it. You no, know, or the uh, the 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 power which were west coast and the east coast, and we went down in there. So let me ask you this, right? You end up going to federal prison. How old are you at the time you go to federal prison? All right, so I was I was 24 years old, and I went to federal prison for a gun charge. I was on the run on a state proper parole violation. I was a reporter, and the parole officers surrounded the crib. There was about 10 people in the crib. Some would throw the gun out the window. They raided the house. I ran because I got warrants. They put the gun out of me. Gun wasn't even my said it was a dark skin black male that threw a gun out of their window. So I thought, oh, I'm beating this case. I'm beating this case. And this is another thing I want to do with youngsters to realize that when you catch a federal case, there ain't no such thing as federal lawyer money. I'm saying you got a federal lawyer money, but it's not really going to help you out like these dudes be standing. Oh, I got lawyer money. This man, all right, well, what are you going to do with the feds to get? Yeah. But I'm saying because they don't care about your money. It's a whole different ballgame when the feds come. So, I'm 24 years old, they, they bump out the record all the way up, they hands me up, and they send me to a USP, but I don't know what a USP is, so when I get off the airplane in Oklahoma, it's a federal uh, facility for, the, for your guests that don't know, and the airplane actually lands in the prison, and when you get off, they give you a piece of paper saying where you're going. So I get the piece of paper, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, USP Lee, and I pay attention to people when I just see heads turning like, yo, man, you're going to USP? I'm like, yeah, what's that? And the other army like, oh, man, you don't want to go there. It's Rocky and Roll. I'm like, no, what do you mean by that? He's like, bodies being rocked and stretchers is being rolling, and the police don't care the inmates run that joint. So I'm like, oh, yeah? I'm like, well, I got nothing to worry about because I ain't never been no snitch. I've always been thorough for the homies, the t- cases with the state penitentiary. No, so I was always the smartest dude, but I never did win against many couples. You know what I mean? I hear you. So let me ask you this. You end up going to USP Lee. When you get there, you know you're a young man, 24 years old. What's your sentence? All right, so I get that. Give me 70 months for a gun charge, right? And I take the, uh, I take the 70 months. I get the USP and Lee. Now, this is what threw me off. When I get there, the warden is sitting there with the SSI officers. And with the, I never, I've been to Prince State Prison four times. I ain't never had a warden even care to talk to the inmates when you get there. This warden, a wine, and sitting there, and he tells me, look, man, is your paperwork hot? I'm like, I, no, I didn't know what hot meant at the time. And the fact that means you're a snitch. And I'm like, no, nah, I never testified to stand on nobody. He's like, well... If they find out, they'll kill you. He said, I got two wolves on his yard. And he had a pair of uh, uh, boots, leather boots, steak boots. And he had a big ass knife. And he said, I got two wolves. He said, don't carry no knives on my yard. And he gave me that look like, everybody got a knife though, man. And he said, if you have to stop somebody out, get your boots, use your shoes. I want no man killed. And he said, have a good day. So, this is where it got crazy, though, because my dad's from Pakistan, my mom's white, 
I'd we're up dang by your Hoover. Now they're like, all right, I'm Muslim. And in and, and the fair, that's a whole different gang, even though it ain't a gang, they consider it a gang. You know what I'm saying? Just like the Pisces, they say it's a not gang, but it's a bigger gang. You know what I'm saying? So I get there, they put me in a cell with somebody that is from Red or East Street. Like one of my uncles that, that I never, the only people I never really got along with was my old people because I was an outcast. You know, I gang bang, I, I smoked weed, I chased girls, you know, I didn't want to study books and learn how to be a healthy, uh, a scholar of the Quran, you know. So what I did there, they put me in the cell with somebody that's Muslim. And so when I come out of the cell in the morning, well, well, that night, when I'm in the cell with the Muslim guy, Jabbar, which he ended up going on, which he ended up being a really good dude. Jabbar is begging me, please don't go on gang time. Please don't go on gang time. They kill each other. They kill each other. So I'm like, well, look, man, you know, all my life I've been a gangster, you know what I'm saying? And this is when my people need me wealth. This is where I got to be, you know what? And so we went to sleep. Well, when the doors cracked open in the morning, I walked out the door and I was surrounded by the Northanios because I, I live Mexican and they probably thought, let's make sure this floor ain't no Sabrano, you know what I'm saying? So they surround me and they ask me where I'm from. So I'm thinking like the state penitentiary, you know, I'm about to just go out and get down with these cats whether I get jumped or not. I tell them, man, I bang Hoover, man, what's up? And then all of a sudden I just see Muslims coming out everywhere, big Muslims, you know what I'm saying? What's the problem, what's the problem? And then the the, the North Angels, they back down, you know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, we just making sure he was this a brain deal, you know what I'm saying? This a met. And so then the Muslims pull me to the side and they're like, look, man, don't even say nothing about being in the gang. No, this ain't what you want to do. You only got five years of how many you're tripping, but I'm like, no, what a gang talk, <laughs> you know? That's how it all was, you know, like I've been a care of five years in the USP and 85% of these people got life and they're looking to hurt somebody. They're like, who, who can we stab next? You know, I want to go on this mission and I've never seen this man people. So the first week I was there, I think I seen about seven people get stabbed. There were no fist fights. Fired the live board out two or three times a day and all of them stabbed him. And it's, it's not people stabbing each other, whites and blacks and Mexicans and whites and blacks. It's your own kind. You know, your own people will stab you. If you're in the wrong, if you're pulling something out the way, if you're gaddling too much, running up a deck. Uh, one of the worst things I've seen is a, a Mexican go up and, and steal some staff fellow, somebody from Carolina's cell, and go out to the yard to get some heroin. Time you came back in that unit. That's another bit. Carolina only has already touched the Mexicans and grand that dude got stabbed so hard you could hear the metal eating the concrete through his body. Let me ask you this. So you're running gang time, Crip, right? No, so look, what happened was the homie Black Lope was there and he was like, Look, man, we could need you for something else. The homies is getting killed left and right. We want you to go be with the Muslims, but we're gonna have you where you help us out with paperwork. Or all of these trying to become Muslims as hot and stuff like that, right? So then I talked to the Sharif of the Muslims and the Imam at the time he was from Florida, and I ended up moving into the Sharif cell of the uh, of the Muslim community, and I was in the gang time always with the Muslims, but I was always out there with the crip on me, so I was trying to play both sides of the fence because I was young and I didn't care. I was getting drugs, slucking weed. Because the, the, the police take care of you got drunk or smoke weed. You know what I'm saying? It was the, the inmates. So then I could get to it with the Muslims. Uh, you can't be here doing this drinking and smoking weed. You, know, you, you, you got to conduct yourself a certain way. So I get into it with them like, look, man, you know, my people from the Middle East, I always been Muslim, but I didn't come here to be no religious nut. You know what I mean? That's not what I'm here for. I'm not changing my ways. You know what I'm saying? I'm living life and Problems came in, you know what I'm saying? And I and they wanted me to go. And usually when they tell you, you got to get out the yard, you got to get out the yard. Well, the only thing I'm going to say that saved me is, you know, usually when you get to the U.S. Fear, some of you all know that one guy had crip on me from Colorado. And my name, man, out here from Ohio, and Ohio, 
the second in command of the uh, the more sized temple. And there was a powerful dude with like Kuvda and made a lot of stuff like that. So they wasn't gonna let nothing happen to me. So they had the top of Bush Boogie, you know what I'm saying? And everyone put it together. I started studying more. The army wanted me to study more, you know what I'm saying? And there was a lot of stuff I did that I started getting it on track. It wasn't like the state penitentiary where people were still in this and that. I actually had good friends on me there, and I had good love on me. You know what I'm saying? The little brother on me, they're all the way 100% backing me up. You know what I'm saying? And so, with that much people support me on both sides, usually people don't get to do that. The Muslims let me hold the, 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 the pot. You know, when you go to church and you put the, the money in the pot, you know what I'm saying? Out everywhere out of the compound, I had to be responsible. And the Muslims tricked me and they made me the mirror of the unit. Just because if someone else had a problem, I would have to know how to issue the consequences. And so, therefore, it kind of tricked me into the religion a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? The studying and maybe more of a helpful person. So, let me ask you this, right? You're talking about the Zakat box. They, get, they put their charity in there, you give it to the brothers. But you're also calling the shots. So in prison, people might not understand is that if some of these brothers break the sherry out or their law, then they end up getting disciplined. It could be lashes, could be people jumping on them, could be anything, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't see nobody getting no lashes at Lee County, but I heard in Big Sandy and Pola and some of the ones that was a little bit worse than Lee County that some of them brothers giving out lashes. No, and so like, I know my job was, you know, I was, well, Sally was there, Sharif. So I sold candy. You know, I walked around, sold candy. I drew cards. I didn't do my tattooing there because too many good men could have got hurt over some tattooing. So I sold candy, but what I did is I, I, talk, I communicated it with everybody except for the racist white dudes because I couldn't really go in their cells or nothing like that. But Mary Virginia, I was born everywhere. You know what I mean? And what I did is I communicated in my network thing. At the same time, if there was a problem with a Muslim, I could bring it to our celly that was ahead of Sharif, and we could talk it out, we could figure out how to, to do uh, consequences, not violent. You know what I mean? Because there was so much violent going on in that place that we were trying to come up with better solutions because others running that prison ourselves wasn't wrecking it. Let me ask you this. I don't think you were there when the when a couple of your homies went to send another one of your homies up top where they wanted him off the yard, dude swings the knife and dude moves out of the way and he hits his old partner. Oh, right, yeah, so look, I was there. That was the same bag that I got into with the Muslims, right? And so when I seen tell that story, I was like, bang, he's talking about a story that I could have been involved in, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, what of my man Hoover on me that was involved in that? You know what I'm saying? They locked him up because he went down to the unit when little cousin got accidentally got stabbed in the head. He, he got stabbed with the ice pick and the police, when they ran in the unit, they didn't know that he had got stabbed and they cuffed him up and took him down where he was a jury of bleeding and like, he ended up dying. But uh, the Rondi kidnapped, you know, from Oklahoma, they locked him up by then. I've never seen him again. I, I don't even know how to find dude, so maybe you could help me find dude. I'm saying he was actually a good dude, and like some of the armies that were doing bad stuff, it wasn't because they wanted to do bad stuff, it's they had to do it. You know, there was little armies getting off the bus and said there was Crip that was 19, 20 years old, and the next time the situation happened, you got to rotate. You got to go stab that dude up. You're going to have to stab a couple of people, little army. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that incident for a minute, right? You got a guy that he's a crip, saying he's a crip whenever there's an issue. They tell him, yo, look, man, you got to go up top, right? Going up top means you got to go to protective custody. We don't want you here. So that's like me and you. We're going on the mission. I swing the knife at the dude we're trying to send up top, and I stab you in the head on accident, right? I think I said the neck, but it was what was it, in this temple? Yeah, his temple. Had him in the temple, and he dies at, at USP Lee. He wasn't even the intended victim, right? No, no, it was It was three homies that ran up on a break. Greg Street was on me that was telling over a bank robbery. You no, know, his paperwork came back that he was hot. When your paperwork comes back that you're a snitch, you ain't getting beat up off the yard. They're stabbing you up off the yard. You no, know, especially if you said he was a gang member. You know what I'm saying? We don't play that. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're up out of here. You know what I'm saying? The, the vicious way. You know what I'm saying? Trying to blab in and you're a snake. 
And so three people ran up in there and swung and he ducked and hit the other on me in the head and it was that hey man, I, it was crazy because I was just playing basketball with little cousin the day before. You had said he was Indian, and that's why I was like, nah, he was true. Uh, his people were from Hawaii, but but they moved to uh, Utah, and they was residing in Utah. There was a lot of small and a big crip population out there in Utah. I thought he was a Native American, so if I'm wrong, I apologize. <laughs> let me let me say this right, so that people can understand, man. You could be sent on a mission and kill your friend that you didn't mean to kill, and now you end up with a life sentence for your gang, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, man. I seen, I seen a, 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 a older Mexican who didn't really know English that well. He had like a fourteen year sentence. We get came through that metal stack, and the police said something to him like, "What you don't know English?" No, that was being disrespectful. And he went on his own mission. He went back to the unit, grabbed his knife, went back to that metal stack. Stabbed that cop like 15 times. I don't know if you remember that. I put on lockdown. I do remember that. And then I remember the Pisces were fighting the cops out there on the yard right around that time. Yeah. It was, it was, I mean, USP Lee was a wild place. Yeah. Uh, how the wave in 2009, I remember I walked out my uh, cellar they called child. And I looked up at the. I was out there, man, the Norteños, right? No, no, here's the earth's all out. When I when I walked out the the, the, the uh, pod, I looked up and the Mexicans was up in the TV room and they had one Mexican in there locked in back there guarded the door. Somebody was getting messed up, so I just kept walking. We got to the chow line, the deuces went off. And the Mexican that was getting messed up, they was walking the back. He was a bison, as a matter of fact. And when they were walking into the hall, he, he yelled something on the yard in Spanish. And within ten minutes, the deuces went off everywhere. The y'all or number damn near every unit. In that, all uh, 12 units, I was sweat off. All these saying, you know, which way to run. I remember that. Hey, listen, let's talk about this. You're a crimp. You're white and Pakistani. And is there any pushback from some of the black homies? Are they like, ah, oh, man, dude's a crimp, man? No, so listen, most of the, most of the pushbacks were because I was Muslim. You know what I mean? And so, like, even when I was in the state penitentiary, you know, uh, I got into it with a couple of homies that came from the Bay Bill. Like, you can't be Muslim and, and Baton Hoover, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, looking at them, and they got a holy Bible. And so I'm like, well, you got a holy Bible, and I got a holy Quran. I bet with the flag, it could fly. You run before I would. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, dude, don't tell me nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I always kind of stood how I had to stand, you know what I'm saying, whether the homies like they or not, because if you think about it, the crit one we don't have. A direct structure. We wasn't like the DD folks and the vice board that had laws. You know what I'm saying? Men like that. The homies, you know what I'm saying? They had certain laws that we live by, like street codes and stuff like that. But there's nothing in the book where we got to do this and we got to do this and we got to do this and step one and step two. Nah, we didn't have that type of structure coming in. I know you talked a little bit about your only Mike Moak. I was with him in Big Sandy when they. They actually massacred one of your dudes. I also did a story where he had sent some dudes to jump on Spivey. Do you remember White Boy Spivey? No, I never met White Boy Spivey, but I heard about him. So, you know, I was there when he sent them on that mission. And, you know, Mike Lowe, I mean, how big is that dude, man? Mike Lowe's pretty big, man. You know, and I just I just got word from Mike Lowe last night. He called him. Uh, he's coming all of this year. What we want to do is... Uh, we're going to start a youth program, you know, let him get on his feet a little bit. I'm sure he's already on his feet, you know, with as much respect that man gives. But I'm sure things would be just happy to him if he wants it. So I'm trying to talk to the homies um, that's coming home this year. I got three, three kind of good brothers coming home, Muslim brothers, and, and I got Mike Lowe coming home this year. And they all had a lot of time, and they went to the law library, and they studied, and they got tied back on their cases. And my thing is, I learned them to move so because by me being in prison six times, every time I got out, I always tried to catch up where I left off and ended that right back. So this time when I came along, I hit the reset button. I noticed that the always didn't come around unless I wanted to sell drugs with them or make money with them and stuff. So I kind of kept most of the homies off. I started doing a lot of tattooing and I started preaching and telling the little holy where not to self-destruct. How not to be a dumb dude. You know what I mean? I was there and I told him, no matter what, there's only going to be a struggle. So you got to learn how to endure it. 
even if we want a million dollars tomorrow, you're going to have troubles. It's just going to be a different type of struggle. How'd you feel when you found out your own boy died, man? The crip on me. Yeah, it was sad, man. Uh, it made me really not like snitches even more, for real. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then it affected me a lot about how I looked at other homies and stuff. Like I said, you know, you could be not doing nothing wrong at all and you'd be in the unit minding your own business. I could be sitting there watching TV with a little candy bag, minding my own business. You know, I sold cards and stuff. And if you see three of your own homies, this could be your own main people. You come in that A unit and you know they're, they belong in that you unit. You start thinking, like, did they hear from me? What did I, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, let me think. And that's crazy because. I didn't do nothing. You know, things I said, apathy, what did I do? But that thought comes across your mind after you see so many people get butchered. Them places is like a, a slaughterhouse, the room. It's like Whitey Bulger, they stay in there, you got slaughtered. Washington, folks say they shang out there. USP is a slaughterhouse. They like the state penitentiaries. Only a couple state penitentiaries is like how the USP is. Well, so what's one of the worst things you've ever seen in there, bro? Well, I've seen a lot of stuff, man. I've seen a lot of people get stabbed in front of me. I've seen people stab people up and be walking the yard two or three days later because the person they stabbed was wrong. I mean, they were right to stab somebody, and the police let them back out. But uh, one of the most messed up situations I was in is I had an older hand dude that just did 30 years, and he was Muslim. We was getting ready to go home. And I had a younger brother that just got 30 years that was in Muslim. And they were both worked out like opsis. They were both strong as opsis. And they got into it about some little commissary. Like, and now this wasn't even at US team. This was at Gilmore, the medium, FCI. And they both grabbed their knives. I took the little youngster up to my cell and I talked to him about 20 minutes. That's on look, man. They had work, they did this and that. He thought he had a point to prove up from DC slam. Got pushed, you know what I'm saying? The only is gonna think I'm weak if I'll push. And whereas I talk them all the way down. So they're like, I'm gonna go talk to them all the way down. When I come out the cell, the OA got his gloves on and he said, Lil Yester, come up. Lil Yester looked at me like I gotta do what I gotta do. He went down there and he stabbed my other brother in the head. Now two weeks from going out, and I'm trying to Keep involved to try to break it up. And, and, and when I, when he stabbed my other dude in the head, that salad that, that he made, you wouldn't think a human being would make that type of salad, man. And so, like, that right there, it messed me up more than all the mother stabbings. I've seen people get killed and all that, probably because both of them was people I prayed next to. And so that, that, that affected me more than anything, I think, out of the, what I've seen, you know what I'm saying? Now, I, I, I say it, seen people get stabbed or the Mexican got stabbed with the knife through his stomach. And it, you can hear the metal, the, 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 the knife, the, the concrete. And the, and the Mexican made a sound that, like, same thing, no human being would think would make that type of sound there. So. You've been old seven years now, right? Seven years yesterday. Seven years yesterday. So let me ask you this. You know, the stuff that you've seen, does it still bother you, man? Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna say it still bothers me to a fact because after a while you start blanking stuff out in the life that I live, like my mom and, and her game, man. First time I seen someone get killed, I was eight. So like, I didn't start seeing people be killed when I was in prison. I caught attempted murder charges and, and, and there's a lot of victims in my case that I would want to touch up and tell them that I feel sorry that I done this to them. You know what I'm saying? I was a kid. I didn't know how to think. I wasn't conscious. Like, I was a, what you call a product of your body. Murdered, dope. And so we murdered and killed our whole time. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't care. Like, when we got in the car looking to go shoot somebody, we wasn't looking for a white guy walking down the street uh, with a tuxedo. We was looking for someone that was dressed just like me, wear red or blue, because I was from Wolverine. So, you know, Wolverine, we didn't get a lot with Prips or Bloods. 
So we wear what hurts. We wear what hurts. So like, that's sad that we get in the car and go look for somebody that looks like me. You know what I mean? Like Kim and Wilder herself. If you think about it, no. How smart was that? Let me ask you about that. Young kids just go out and be like, yo, man, we're about to pick someone that you don't even know the person. Just because of what they're wearing or who they're affiliated with, you're going to take their life? Yeah, and that's how it was. Like I said, growing up in the 90s in Denver, when everyone from California was coming to Denver, you know, uh, we were stealing cars, and we was doing our proof school. You didn't even have to be wearing the wild color. You could just be walking down the street. You know what I'm saying? We were jumping out, beating you up, checking your pockets. You know what I'm saying? And it's just sad how we were raised, so if we weren't taught, not only dad was too busy working, Mom was out the holly, you know. That's why I always tell people, you know, with the youth, whether you're you're mild and bad, locked up, dead on drugs, or they work too much. You now, if you're being neglected and they're not communicating with you, you know what I'm saying? You go and fight it through your peers, and they're 13 and 14 years old. What do you think they're going to teach you? How smart do you think they are? <laughs> well, listen, man. Before we get ready to go, man, why don't you plug the tattoo shop that you're working at? And talk a little bit about whatever you want to say. All right, so look, I work at on or um, I could have already had my own tattoo shop because it's easy to put in wellhungs and brats and stuff like that and manipulate a couple things to get what I need to get. But I'm in the city, Canton, Ohio, and the population is seventy thousand. And I know the whole city, like the whole city, I can't even go to Walmart. People Moses, Moses, no leave and so it, the that's good, but the bad thing is just because I get along with everyone, I don't mean they get along with every work. So if I had a tattoo shop and my daughter's older brother was there and someone from the other side that I got watched grow up too, they like want to kill each other. But they both love me, so like I'm doing the same thing out here, trying to teach the little armies and bring them together. You know what I'm saying? But why are y'all killing each other? For what? You know how smart you're so um, I just work out out my house for now. You know, like I said, I want to eventually start a youth program, like in Islam, tattooing is around. You know, a lot of curses the picture maker. So I feel like oh, I have better blessings. I'll make more money. Um, if I go around the United States and just talk to the youth about self destruction and teach the youth counselors how to deal with the youth too. Well, I hope that you end up doing that stuff, man. Listen, I appreciate you coming on, man. I'm going to post up some of your work off Facebook. I think you do some good work. And, you know, you've seen some stuff. You've been through some things. And I want people to realize that, you know, someone can tell you, you're like, yo, you're 19 years old. I'm the shop caller. Dude, you know, dude's hot. He's got to go. Go style. You go down there. You only got to, you know, I hate to say it like this, but you only got 15 years. You stabbed the wrong dude, and now you got a life sentence. That's possible. And a lot of people, if you think if you don't stab them, guess what? You're, you're going to get rocked to sleep too. You know what I'm saying? Because you say that you wanted to rotate and now you're not rotating. You know what I'm saying? It all add up. It's like a machine, man. It'll chew you up and spit you out. Right, Moses? Yeah, it's a machine, man. And you got to be able to think. I call it an invisible web, man. It's an invisible web that a lot of us don't see until it's too late. And so this time I came home, I had the reset button. And I told the little homies, you got to work slow. So instead of me jumping out there and doing everything fast, I'm doing what I teach them to do. I'm moving real slow. You know I'm saying maybe a little too slow. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I feel like it's going to benefit everybody if I move slow. And I'm a thinker for everyone around me. I did have to be more conscious. Well, listen, man, that's what's up. Again, man, I appreciate you coming on. Tell people, man, hit that like, subscribe button, share the video. I think there's something to learn here. With respect, blow down the razor wire TV until tomorrow. We're out.